Hey guys, Victor here again, coming at you with another retro deck profile for the September 2011 format. And today's focus is going to be on Pure Chaos, which in this format can pretty much go one of two ways. Either you can go like full combo, or you can go and lean into like the anti-meta aspect that Chaos has to offer. And for this specific profile, we're going to be leaning into the, like, the more anti-meta side. So with that out of the way, let's jump straight into the deck profile. So we're going to be kicking off the monster lineup with three Thunder King Riles. Normally you see me play only two in these types of decks, but since this is super heavy focus on Chaos, and this is, like I said, an anti-meta version, you definitely want to go for three Thunder King Riles just because it's able to prevent so many key cards from resolving, and it's a big beat stick, it's a light monster. Like, it just does so much for the deck, so three is definitely the way to go for this version. Then, we're also going to be playing three Tour Guide of the Underworld, or from the Underworld, along with the one Sangan. So even though this is anti-meta, Tour Guide is still really helpful in you, helping you get back your resources and helping you fill up your grave with dark monsters, you know, for free chaos fodder. Uh, yeah, it, it just, it does so much for the deck. There's no reason not to play this engine. Then after that, we're also going to be playing three effect veilers. This is also a really important light monster because it helps you negate your opponent's monster's effects. And since it's a light, it also helps feed your chaos engine. And then there are also times where you have to like normal summon this to synchro for like a level five or whatever, but it honestly doesn't come up too much, but yeah, it's still a very important card. Then after that, we're gonna be playing the two max C's because it's max C. But something that you don't really see all that often anymore, at least when like people revisit this format, is Doom Caliber Knight, which we are playing two of. So in addition to being like a dark monster, Doom Caliber Knight pretty much acts as like a second effect veiler because it's a mandatory activation that whenever your opponent uses a monster effect, Doom Caliber Knight must negate it. And this also applies to your monsters, by the way. So whenever a monster effect is activated, period, Doom Caliber Knight will activate. And uh, there isn't really much to say. Uh, just be careful with this card because sometimes it can, it can come back to bite you. Uh, especially if you're like you're ordering your attacks wrong, for example. So say you have a Thunder King Ryo and a Doom Caliber Knight, right? Uh, you attack your opponent's face down with Thunder King Ryo first. It's a Raikou. That means Doom Caliber Knight is forced to activate. And you basically just lost your second attack and your chance of dealing damage. And you know, just little things like that tend to add up really fast. So Doom Caliber Knight, while it's still a very good card, it is somewhat difficult to use compared to like a lot of the other cards. Then, uh, after that, we're going to be playing two Dimensional Alchemist. Uh, even though it's not terrible, it's honestly not that needed in this version because there's so many other normal monsters or so many other normal summonable monsters that you can use. But just being able to banish the top card of your deck and if it's a monster, get it back when this card is destroyed is still really helpful. And like all the other cards, it is a light to help feed your Chaos Engine. Then, after that, we're going to be playing two Chaos Sorcerers. Uh, I'm pretty sure you can play three in this format, but three tends to brick a lot. So we're going to be going with two only. And not much to say, Chaos Sorcerer is really good. You banish a light and dark, special summon it, and then you banish one face-up card on the field, but it can't attack after you activate this effect. And then, that's not really that big of a downside because, say for example, you have a Veiler in your hand, you can go Normal Chaos Sorcerer, or Special Chaos Sorcerer, Banish, Normal Veiler, then Synchro for 7 into like Arcanite Magician or something, and yeah, there's just like a lot of really cool plays that you can make uh, thanks to Chaos Sorcerer. And then we're also going to be playing the one of Black Luster Soldier Envoy in the beginning, uh, it's literally Chaos Sorcerer, but better in every single way. <laughs> and then after that, we're going to be playing a bunch of one ofs for the monsters. So we're playing the one of Gores, the Emissary of Darkness. It's a dark monster. It's a big body. If Gores comes down, your opponent is going to have to waste a bunch of resources just to get rid of it. So yeah, no reason not to. Then we're also playing the one of Honest. Since there are a lot of light monsters, Honest does pair really well with this deck. Uh, but yeah, it's just still just like a generic good card. And then here's where the stuff gets somewhat weird but not really it's it's normal for like you know anti-meta chaos decks but you don't really see it all that often so we're playing the one black wing gill the whirlwind it's just another really cool utility card because it helps you beat over imposing monsters like starter's dragon fairly easily it's a dark monster it's a, one of your very few tuners that you can actually use to synchro summon with in this deck even though typically you don't synchro summon you'd much rather have like your monsters just be on the field at all times whether it's like doom Cal or thunder king ryo but yeah it's still really good when it goes off then we're also playing one Spirit Reaper for defense, uh, one DD Warrior Lady, because sometimes there are situations where like you just want to ram this to get rid of like a key monster, even though it isn't all that often. But you know, it's still nice to have the option. And then for the final one up, we're playing one Kaiku the Ghost Destroyer, also another dark. But the cool thing about Kaiku is that it helps us, you know, have a graveyard control over our opponent. Because when this card's on the field, 
your opponent cannot banish cards and then when this card inflicts or cannot banish cards from the graveyard and then when this card inflicts damage you're able to banish two monsters from the grave so yeah just a fantastic card all around and really helps you like keep the theme of anti-meta because of just the, the amount of control that these cards offer you so with that that's the monster lineup and now we can move on to the spell portion of the deck now something that's weirder compared to like most other chaos variants is that the spell lineup is actually really small and we're going to lean really heavily into the trap portion but still we're going to be starting off with the one heavy storm one dark hole one reborn one book of moon and one mystical space typhoon you don't really need, need much more than that. The only change that I would maybe consider making is adding one Allure of Darkness. Just and You can easily cut something from the trap section. It's not that big of a deal. But for the most part, these are like the main five spell cards that you want to play. Just because they have, they're so impactful in what they're able to do. So yeah, that's it for that. But like I said, if you want to play Allure, you can. There's a lot of cards that you can cut in like the trap portion that wouldn't be like the you know biggest deal. And then for traps, we're playing one called the Haunted. Sometimes it conflicts with Gores, but most of the time it doesn't. And it's still really helpful helping you get back key pieces like Chaos Sorcerer and Blackluster Soldier if they've been destroyed by cards like Mirror Force or Dark Hole. Then uh, we're playing Two Dimensional Prison. Uh, it's alright, but it's not the greatest. It's still really helpful helping you get rid of key pieces like your opponent's opposing Thunder King Ryos or the Reborn Tengus. So yeah, I, I still really like the card. And you're playing the Solemn Package, so you have the two Solemn Warnings with the one Solemn Judgment. And just a bunch of 1-0s. So you have one Starlight Road. This is probably the most cuttable one, if I'm being honest. And you could easily just cut this for Allure if you want to. You know, if you want to add, like, more consistency to the deck. Now, one Mirror Force, one Torrential Tribute, and the one Trap Dust Shoot. And that's it for the main deck. It's 40 cards like always, and now we can finally go on to the extra deck portion. Now, for the extra deck, it's pretty much the same as the other Chaos deck as it doesn't really change all that often, so we're still going to be playing the one of Le Leviathan Dragon. However, one of the biggest differences is that we're going to be playing two Levier of the Sea Dragon instead. So, uh, Levier is a really good card in this deck because it's a lot more slower, you know, uh, compared to, like, other Chaos decks, but that means you're going to be able to, like, grind harder and longer than most other games, and through double Levier, you're going to be able to get back a lot of really good and important cards. So, I definitely figured out or figure that two is definitely the way to go for this specific version of the deck. And then you still have their one ofs like Steel Swarm Roach and Utopia, which you don't make too often, but you know, the, having the option is still nice. And then after that, we're just playing a bunch of synchro monsters. Uh, we're playing the one of Armory Arm, the one of Ally Just Cataster, the one of Riotic Dragon of the Ice Barrier, one of Orient Dragon. Uh, this is Blackwing Armedwing. So this is something that you can make because of the fact that we played Gale in like a couple level threes. But in all honesty, this should 100% be Blackwing Armor Master because it's so much easier to make than Armedwing as all it takes is a Gale and a level four monster. But if you don't have Armor Master, Armedwing is, you know, a fine substitute for the card. Then we're also playing the one Arcanite Magician, the one Black Rose Dragon, the one Scrap Dragon, the one Stardust Dragon, and lastly, the one Trisha Dragon of the Ice Barrier. And with that, that's the Chaos deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did, please feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time. See ya!